Okay, the last system I want to talk about is one I've never seen talked about in nymph fishing, and it's really something we do a lot of. That's upstream nymph fishing. Oh, man, did he drill it? Don't go over there. You come back, come back to see me. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, I gotta chase this one. Crashed once, but it's a beautiful brownie. Look at his fin. He's a war dog. He's been fighting fish was bigger than this. So we chased him for a mile. Now the nymphal form of these large stone flies, because they have a three-year life cycle, are very important to the angler because they're common in the stream, 12 months a year, 365 days a year. So any river that has good numbers of stoneflies, of the large stoneflies, you can go out in winter, summer, spring, fall, and have some quite good fishing with stonefly nymphs. One of the other insects which we'd find, I mentioned the golden stone. This is another quite large stonefly with a three-year life cycle. And this offers another color form. The salmon fly is quite orange underneath its body. And the golden stone is exactly what it sounds like. It's a golden color underneath. Uh, on the underside of the body. And both these are spring hatching stoneflies and amount to a great deal of furious activity for a relatively short time period. What did you ask me to produce for you, my friend? <laughs> Is that going to work? Is he four pounds, Davy? Oh, he's a bit more now, I guess, huh? Four, four and a half. Right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. There we go. She is ready. Good job. Boom! <laughs> you too can catch fish like that if you learn a wet fly fish. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Spectacular, Terry. What a perfect morning. Although they're not always this way, it's one of the great reasons why I enjoy fly fishing. Fly fishing is a journey. It's not a destination. And like many other sports, fly fishing requires you mastering some basic skills. Don't be intimidated. In the tape to follow, we'll show you just how easy fly fishing can be. Wendy Gunn are the featured hosts on Flyfish Television Magazine. We've asked them to give the novice fly angler some basic information on the equipment and techniques that are part of the sport. Your local fly fishing shop can be the place to start learning about fly fishing equipment. A fly rod is designed to cast a fly line. It is the mass of the fly line that carries the fly. We're going to watch Wendy Cast here for a moment and discuss some terminology. We're going to talk about the stroke, which is the range of motion she's making with her arm and the fly rod. To understand what we're trying to achieve with the cast, it's very important to understand what the rod is doing and what your arm is doing during the cast. This motion here has very little to do with fly casting. I would rather you think of it as a small pull and a push with the rod small pull and a small push. Remember, we've made our setup, we formed the rooster tail, the rod's at a 45 degree angle, a single plane, and you can see that rooster tail come right off the water and actually pass directly in front of me. It's at that point where I'm forming my 180 degree D loop behind the rod tip. Setup, rooster tail, quick acceleration, jump, beautiful forward cast. That's absolutely key, is to keep the line speed at a constant level. Set up, watch the rooster tail pass around in front of us, big D loop behind us, and a perfect forward cast. A pluck is where that line tightens up just a little bit, and you know there's some weight there, and it releases. And that's the fish that came up, turned on the fly, touched it, and then let it go. But there's definitely some substantial weight there. We often define a little heavier grab as a pull. Well, they might even come up, take the fly, and pull out six, eight, 12 inches of line. Fish on! Hey, hey! Well, I knew they were in here this morning. 
It felt too good. I don't know why we couldn't find one on a skater, but they sure like this wet fly. He's coming right into me. Oh, baby. Every steelhead's awesome. This video is designed to give you a system for starting to fly fish for bass and panfish. We're convinced that if you add these species to your angling menu, you'll open the door to new seasons and new water. Oh, there he goes. You got him. Nice going, little one. Your host is Skip Morris, and he's joined by his wife, Carol. She's an excellent angler in her own right, but operates as a straight man in this tape asking questions and taking instruction in your place. So you, it's a good, it's a logical Oh, manual. he came off. Oh, did he? Did a good head shake for you, several of them. Hi, I'm Maggie Merriman. I'm a professional fly fishing instructor and angler. And I'd like to share with you today some running water techniques. Now once you've learned how to do the basic casting strokes, you're ready to go to the water. But once you start fishing, you need to know four, four basic running water techniques. In our first couple videos, we talked a lot about the predatory instinct of big fish and the size of the flies and the types of flies I used. And the second video I did was about tying those flies. But all those flies were standard hooks. And in the last, say, three years, I'd say that most of my flies have become articulated. Now he looks kind of like he's giggling. That's got to be a trigger element, don't you think? You don't really have to put it in there. So that's it right there. Now that's the whole fly, that's the TNA bunker. You can see everything's done. You don't have to do anything else to the fly. You trim it out. The fly will, this fly is really thin in profile, or, or width, but really big in profile. It's gonna do the swim action. There we go, ho ho! Six pound fish it looks like. <laughs> Here, do that one again. All right, it's a big black woolly. So, oh! <laughs> Stoned on me here. Oh, 